Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin shortly. Please begin to take your seats and silence all cell phones and devices. Simultaneous translation is provided using the headsets located in the back of the facility. As a reminder, this will be an indoor, uncovered ceremony, and therefore no salutes will be rendered. Thank you. 신사숙녀 여러분, 곧 행사가 시작될 예정입니다. 착석해 주시고 휴대전화는 무음으로 변경해 주시기 바랍니다. 행사장 뒤편에 있는 동시 통역기를 통해 통역이 제공될 예정이니 필요하신 분은 와서 가져가시기 바랍니다. 오늘의 행사는 실내 행사로 진행될 예정이니 이에 맞는 예를 갖춰 주시기 바랍니다. Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin in two minutes. Please take your seats. Thank you. Welcome to today's change of command ceremony where Major General Michael E. Martin will relinquish command to Brigadier General Derek N. Lipson. The presiding officer for today's ceremony is Lieutenant General Willard M. Burleson III, Commander 8th Army. Please stand for the arrival of the official party, the playing of the national anthems, performed by Corporal Jun Hyuk Choi Rockswick, followed by the invocation delivered by Chaplain Jesse McCullough.
to be here today among these incredible people for this auspicious occasion. We thank you for allowing us to be a part of SOC Corps as well as UNCSOC with this critical mission. Today we specifically thank you for Major General Martin and all that has been accomplished under his command. Thank you for his faith, his prioritization of people, his wisdom, his dedication to freedom, and the example he sets for everyone to witness. Please bless and be with him, Cynthia, and their children as they move to Florida and continue to lead and inspire so many. We also thank you for bringing Brigadier General Lipson. As he prepares for the grueling task of command, help him to remember that you have brought him to this position. Give him and his wife, kids, and their grandkids strength as they are apart. May this be a trial that produces perseverance. Surround him with good counsel, give him discernment, wisdom, and allow him to continue the great legacy of both SOCOR and UNCSOC. Finally, Lord, we thank you for all these incredible service members, family members, our Rockswick friends, as well as the great people of both Korea and the United States. Help us to remain grateful, please bless us, make your face shine upon us, and help us to always remember the incredible grace, mercy, kindness, and love that you have. Please watch over this ceremony today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. Thank you, Corporal Troy and Chaplain McCullough. Please be seated. Today we have some special guests in attendance. Please hold all applause until the end of introductions. The Assistant Secretary of Defense for Special Operations in Low Intensity Conflict, the Honorable Christopher Mayer. The Deputy Commander, Combined Forces Command, General An Byuk Suk. The Deputy Commander, United Nations Command, Lieutenant General Andrew Harrison. The Mayor of Pyeongtaek, Jong Seon Jung. We would also like to welcome all other distinguished guests and visitors attending this event in person and via virtual transmission. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Lieutenant General Burleson. Well, good afternoon to everybody, uh, especially Honorable Mayor. Thank you for flying in this morning. Uh, General Ahn, thank you as well for coming, as well as General Harrison and, and General Sohn. And of course, uh, Mayor Jung and his wife. I, I do want to have a shout out also to Command Sergeant Major Love our USFK, UNC, and CFC Command Sergeant Major. So thank you all for coming. Today we do recognize the change in leadership uh, for both Special Operations Command Korea as well as United Nations Command Special Operations component. So Mike, uh, I got a text from General Camera this morning on a couple things he wanted me to say. Um, first of all, he wanted to thank all of you for coming and, and he regrets that he wasn't able to be here. Uh, but Mike, the specific things he wanted me to say is he wanted to personally express his appreciation for your leadership, personal example, and teamwork to others. So thank you very much on his behalf. I also know that he's very proud um, of the entire work that your team has done on behalf of the United States and the Republic of Korea. And so thank you for all that all of you have done over um, General Martin's tenure. Uh, again, General Martin, or Honorable Mayor, thank you for coming uh, long haul, but it means a lot that Assistant Secretary of Defense 
for special operations and low intensity conflict would come. It shows the importance of this region. So thank you very much, sir. And then a warm welcome to everybody. We do have some people out there in uh, Facebook Live. So if everybody will turn and wave towards the families, these are the families uh, of the Martins and and, uh, and uh, General Lipson. So welcome to them as well. They're scattered across the United States. And of course, uh, thanks, Ben, for coming. It's a busy time of the year for you. Thanks for all that you do and your hard work. So today, ceremony does uh, make it known that we're changing from one outstanding leader here to another. And this unit in SOC Corps is everybody always has confidence that they'll complete their mission. And they're a critical part of the U.S. Forces Korea and our ROC U.S. Alliance here within the Republic of Korea. They've conducted realistic training across multiple domains in a live environment of Northeast Asia. And your team has prioritized readiness, not just U.S., but also U.S. ROC. And the things that you've done with ROC Special Warfare Command are tremendous. And I applaud the entire team for what they have done to defend two homelands, the Republic of Korea and the United States of America. You've delivered training and capability, Mike, you and your team, that has made our commitment and our alliance stronger every single day. So again, Mike, congratulations on your successful command. May God bless you, Cynthia, and your family as you move on to your next chapter. But as we say farewell to Major General Martin, we're fortunate, fortunate enough to have another great leader replace him. Brigadier General Derek Lipson comes to us from First Special Forces Command. He's got a tremendous reputation He's an experienced leader who I know will be able to continue the great work that is underway with our, within Special Operations Command Korea. Derek, you, you're inheriting a great team of warriors, and I have no doubt that you'll lead them to distinction. Um, I also extend a special welcome to your wife, uh, Jenny, as the children that are out there in uh, Facebook land. Uh, we welcome all of you to the team, and we'll keep an eye on them, okay? Finally, uh, I'm proud to just see so many of you here across a wide variety of commands, both ROC and U.S. It clearly demonstrates the commitment in coming together here as a team, a team around Special Operations Command that works hand in hand with ROC Special Forces. So thanks to you all for you for coming here today. I know that all of you will do your own little part to ensure that we're ready to fight tonight. Thank you very much. Katsha Kapshida, we go together. Thank you, General Burleson. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Christopher Mayer. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks. I'm really thrilled to be here today at Camp Humphreys. And as I often have to remind my friends and colleagues back at the Pentagon, it is the largest U.S. military base in the world. We sometimes uh, don't think of that, but critically important, I think, and one that goes to the core of why I'm here and some of the remarks General Burleson already made to the partnership we have here with the Republic of Korea. For those of you I haven't had the opportunity to meet, and based on the size of this group, uh, there's a lot of you. Uh, I'm the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Special Operations and Low Intensity Conflict. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, but wanted to let you know that I come representing the Secretary of Defense, and part of my job is to take care of the men and women in the Special Operations Enterprise in addition to ensuring that the soft value proposition is one that's incorporated every day into our, our thinking and planning at the Department of Defense. I'm really grateful to General uh, Paula Cameron and all the teammates across U.S. Forces Korea, the Combined Forces Command and the United Nations Command who invited me here today and have shown tremendous hospitality. While this is a short stay for me here in Korea this time, I am honored to be here and to participate in the change of command. I'm really grateful to General, Major General Martin that I was able to catch up with him a bit this morning on our drive in from Incheon and uh, really look forward to the hearing more from you all in the reception of the work he's done uh, and also look forward to the future here with General Lipson. Um, but first, I'll start with uh, Lieutenant General Burleson. Thank you for providing, presiding over the ceremony today and the great discussion we enjoyed today at lunch. 
Your leadership of the 8th Army and the service on the Korean Peninsula exemplifies our nation's longstanding and ironclad commitment to our Korean allies. General Ahn and Lieutenant General Sun, thank you for being here. Your support to our alliance has been exceptional, and your presence here is a testament to the importance of the Special Operations Team to our mutual security. I am grateful that many of our Korean Special Operations teammates are here today as well. Lieutenant General Harrison, thank you for being here and leading the UN's enduring commitment to the maintaining the peace on the Korean Peninsula. Thank you also for your years of serving and fighting alongside the United States on multiple deployments. Mayor Young, thank you for joining us and for your prior military service with Special Warfare Command. We are grateful for the partnership of the Korean people and this local community. I owe a huge debt of thanks to the SOC Corps teammates that worked, out, worked on today's ceremony and also found time during their busy day in preparation to make me smarter for the experience of coming to visit with you all and understanding in more detail the great work you do here every day. The commitment and sacrifice that you and your families make is truly an inspiration, and I saw that firsthand today. Major General Martin and Brigadier General Lipson are lucky men for the chance to serve with you. I'm sure they would agree. That brings me to Major General Mike Martin and to your family members who are joining us virtually, your wife, Cynthia, your children, Robert, Gabriella, and Olivia. Thank you for your sacrifice during an overseas PCS and throughout Mike's military career. We are mindful of the sacrifices that military families make every day. Mike, I know you're looking forward to returning home after your second tour here in Korea. We talked about when you were here in 1986, probably never anticipating you'd be coming back for a change of command in which you participated in as the outgoing commander. Fortunately, you will be back well in time for football season. I noticed a lot of different SEC football allegiances amongst your family. Uh, my own wife is a Georgia Bulldogs fan, and so we're complicating things either further by me being here, but probably makes for an interesting college football season when you're home. And thank you and your family for several generations of proud military service and for putting those football allegiances aside to serve the nation. And to Brigadier General Derek Lipson and your family, I know they are all located across the Midwest. We're talking, coming in here a little bit about our mutual connections to Nebraska. Uh, but instead of burning the midnight oil, uh, watching this ceremony, hopefully they're making the smart choice and watching the ceremony later. If you are watching it live, um, I am very glad you're able to. And we want to thank your wife, Jeannie, who's already been mentioned back home in Kansas, along with Tyra and your grandchildren, Grant and Eleanor, and your parents, Jay and Jean, Hopefully they're figuring out the time change difference here. Your brother Bryce and your sister Stacy and her family who are all watching us from Colorado. And your daughter Alexis in Lincoln, Nebraska. Derek, for a guy from Kansas with family all over the Midwest, I will have to ask your, you at the reception about how you're both a fan of the Montreal Canadiens and the LA Angels. Uh, as a Northern Californian myself, I'll give you partial credit for rooting for a California team. Uh, one of the reasons we spend so much time recognizing the family and other people in our lives is they're so important to making these ceremonies happen. And I think all of us recognize the sacrifices that our, our families, our spouses make to allow us to do the things that we do for, for the public good. It is really them who serve alongside of us as we lead and those who we really rely on in the support. Uh, it's, it's really them who make this day happen. So. Uh, Major General Martin, you clearly put people first during your time leading here SOC, in leading SOC Corps. Certainly have heard that. You exemplify that soft truth in doing so, that people are more important than hardware. You live that ideal through your leadership of this command the past two years and deep in critical partnerships with our partners here on the Korean Peninsula. Thank you for investing in our people and harnessing the power of our partnerships. As President Biden has said in our national strategic documents reiterate, this is the decisive decade for this world, we think. We will be most successful in that decisive decade by working closely with our allies and partners, as we have done here in Korea for 70 years and will continue to do so. And in fact, this is really the model that we hope to emulate in so many other relationships around the world. I know General Fenton, the SOCOM commander, sends his regrets for not being able to attend today. But I also know he is thrilled to have you join his team in Tampa as U.S. SOCOM's Director for Operations. This is usually the job where you get the least amount of sleep, so I'm sure you've 
uh, had a nice rest here in time to go move paper uh, down at U.S. Special Operations Command. But in all seriousness, thank you for continuing to serve the soft enterprise during this decisive decade. I'm glad that you have more runway in your career, both as an Air Force officer and special operations leader, and you should ultimately be proud of the trajectory you have set here for SOC Corps. And then, Derek, you're inheriting a tremendous team here, I think you know, and this will be a truly unique command experience. This is a special opportunity for all of us, I think, to reflect on the, the commitments that our leaders make but especially here at SOC Corps, where we have a unique ex experience, and I think you will see that, Derek, in leading a group that is a fully combined command. And Billy, to work side by side with our partners is exactly what our special operators are made to do. And we know that we must be prepared together to ensure we are able to respond to pro provocations throughout the peninsula. <clears throat> so in concluding, I would thank you all for coming here today and really um, ask you all to continue to, to commit to making this command a success. I think General Lipson would appreciate that. And I know I look forward to working with him and enhancing our partnership here back into the Pentagon and look forward to seeing you at the Commander's Decision Roundtables where we get together about every quarter to talk across the soft enterprise. Ultimately, though, I want you all in the, on the SOC Corps team to know how proud I am of the dedication and professionalism you have every day, the things that make the world go round and really fundamentally are what make this command so well esteemed in the, in the Pentagon and amongst the soft enterprise. And lastly, I would say that I am greatly appreciative of you allowing me to participate today. It's truly an honor, and I look forward to the rest of the ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. At this time, General Burleson will present General Martin with the Defense Superior Service Medal for his service as the Commander of Special Operations Command Korea. Please remain seated during the presentation. Major General Michael E. Martin, United States Air Force, distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious service as the commander, Special Operations Command Korea, from June 2021 to June 2023. The distinctive accomplishments of Major General Martin reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, and the Department of Defense. Signed, Paul J. LeCamera, Commanding General, United States Forces Korea. Thank you, General Burleson. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome General Martin. Woo, it was a tough one, but uh, it's time. And I'm um, excited for Derek and his family uh, coming in behind Cynthia and myself. Uh, if you allow me just a few minutes uh, to address uh, everyone here, um, I want to say sincere thanks to General Burleson for stepping up and uh, really uh, not just the today, but the entire time I've been here. And I sincerely appreciate, you know, I'm, you know, I'm touched by you actually officiating and understanding why General Cameron can't be here. So thank you very much, sir. Um, Honorable Mayor, this is a long trek, but uh, I know the men and women of SOC Corps and our ROC Special Operations teammates that are here and, and Mayor Young here next to you. Um, we're excited and we're enthusiastic about you being here and, and taking time with us today. and. Uh, and learning about the institution a little bit more and uh, we continue to row hard as, a, as a, an alliance and as SOC Corp in the U.S. SOCOM enterprise. Uh, Mayor Young, it is awesome to see you and your wife here. Uh, Cynthia sends her regards. We look forward to hoping to host you in Tampa at some point, but our friendship uh, with you since we've been here and being now honorary citizens of Pyeongtaek, which I've heard there is no taxes associated with that, that I'm good to go and uh, we might be able to get some vacation property here. So thank you very much uh, for being here. General An, from CFC. I, when I look at you, sir, don't take offense. I think General Kim as well. And the reason why I say that is because um, when we took command in the height of COVID and a lot of the restrictions and constraints back in um, June of 2021, General Kim, that in your current position, was the first person to the reception. And he spent an inordinate amount of time with Cynthia, my wife, 
and talked with her at great length. Um, she has never forgotten that, and I was able to talk with General Kim last week and remind him about how powerful and, and meaningful that was to not just her but to me, that he took that much time of his busy duty day uh, to, to help her understand and welcome her here to Korea. Uh, General Harrison, great to see you as well, too. Um, um, little be known, um, General Harrison, Hank Taylor, uh, Brian Wolford over there, we were all in Afghanistan together in 2019, so it's really cool to come back to the merge in a different part of the world serving in allies, you know, and multilateral, you know, formations um, here in Korea, just like we were doing back in Afghanistan. So thanks to see you guys here. I know we're in good hands uh, as I, you know, exit stage left here later today. But to my ROC teammates from all the soft formations and those that are not soft, soft doesn't solely do things by themselves. We're very fortunate and blessed. We have uh, representatives from ROC Second Fleet as an example here. And so we work in all the domains, and we're a joint organization, and we also have Katusas in our organization. That's what makes SOC Corps so unique, so diversified and successful, is because of the, those different ways of thinking, cultural backgrounds in, infused inside this organization. That is the secret sauce to our success. So um, thanks for all our ROC teammates that are here. We're very fortunate and blessed to be here. And then I see a whole host of other commanders spouses that are here that joined us today um, on behalf of Cynthia and myself thank you for taking time to be here uh, with us today um, 70 year anniversary from the signing of the armistice it's later this you know later this month and so uh, and into July some big heavy events and as General Burleson indicated or I'm sorry uh, uh, the Honorable Mayor uh, indicated yes I was here as a one striper back in 1986 working electronic warfare reconnaissance um, up at Osan Air Base. So to come back and have my Korean teammates ask me if I know what soju is, uh, my natural response to them is, I was drinking that while you were in grade school. So I'm ready, so bring it, you know. And so thank you for your hospitality and hosting me in every time and then also trying to see if you can get soju over on me, which uh, I don't think you were ever successful. Um, I will conclude with my rock teammates. You know we're serious about being ready. We'll drive hard every single day and we wanna fail forward. We want to learn from our mistakes, and so we're going to keep challenging ourselves. We're going to keep driving hard because you never know when our elected leaders say, hey, I need you to go to some place in the world to go do something. And if you're not ready, then you ain't in the game and you ain't in the conversation, and that's not acceptable. It's SOC Corps. We're going to be ready, and we're going to always be considered as an option for the commander to consider uh, should we be needed. So continue to train hard, and I know Derek is going to continue to push that up and, and make that a priority. Um, I, I do want to focus on the unit and, and our families as well with seeing so many other spouses here. I see spouses from our unit here as well. Um, been incredible and it doesn't necessarily mean family has to be here. Every one of us has family somewhere in the world. And so the amount of time, energy and effort that you put into the defense of South Korea and our own homeland as well, the professionalism, the professionalism in which you execute the mission day in and day out to learn, to grow, to ensure that we have our ironclad commitment is underwritten by your hard work and the support of your families. And those families are our bedrock and we reach back to our families and thank you to all those families no matter where you're at in the globe. Um, you underpin and drive and give the enthusiasm and energy for us to serve our great nation but also serve this great nation of, of Korea. I'll, I'll conclude with uh, uh, my family as well. Um, Cynthia, although returned uh, last month back to the United States, uh, due to a host of reasons, but one daughter graduating from college, uh, going to get going and moving to a job, one studying in London who might be up on the net right now as well, um, and the dog and heat, everybody kind of knows those kind of those kind of dynamics you got to deal with uh, getting pets out of here and here as well. Um, Cynthia, I, I was proud to, to serve here with her. Not only is part of the SFRG inside of our organization, but uh, you know she made it a, a really a strong drive at the education of kids. Uh, she was part of a couple groups that were ensuring that our kids got the highest quality education that they deserve. Um, and although we don't have kids in Dodia, we did at one point, and so she continues to drive hard at that. Passion to serve to ensure the, the medical care for our family members is at the highest rate and representing that. Um, and then uh, being part of two non soccer related mentor groups with other spouses around the installation, I think she learned a lot and she gave a lot um, to that. And then last, some exceptionally kind and gracious Korean friends and international friends in the Seoul area 
that she got to spend quite a few time you know with and i know she sorely misses it and if you read the newspaper article i was quoted as saying that she will be back in spring and i think uh she will definitely bounce around here and as i joke continually uh, she will look to try to help uh, the, the economy and the G status of Korea move up um, in the world rankings uh, by shopping and, and spending time with such lovely folks. Again, thank you for taking time out of your day here. I, we're very blessed and honored to have you to be uh, spending this with us. I know it's a little bit hot here, but uh, we, we wanted to do it in our space, in our terms here, you know, in SOCOR, and, and we're thankful for all those that take, took the time to come here. I am extremely uh, fortunate to have worked with such great, exceptional Korean teammates. Um, having spent many times, like I was indicating, like with Hank in Afghanistan, so many rotations to the Middle East and two years in Africa, sometimes your calculus and your understanding of the world and those dynamics you have to balance, you've helped me recalibrate and open my eyes. Um, and the alliance, I think, is in great hands with Derek as he takes over uh, SOCOR. So thank you again. Give him everything you gave me. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you anytime that you're in Tampa. And if I'm ever here in, in Korea, I look forward to drinking a glass of soju with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, General Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Major General Martin will now relinquish command to Brigadier General Lipson. Today's change of command ceremony will have the passing of colors for United Nations Command Special Operations Component, as well as Special Operations Command Korea, signifying the dual command responsibilities bestowed upon the commander. The change of command ceremony is a military ceremony rich with symbolism and heritage. Throughout military history, armed forces have carried an emblem or banner wherever they traveled. It marked the position of the commander on the battlefield and served as a rallying point for the troops. Modernly, the colors represent not only heritage and history of the unit, but are also the commander's symbol of authority, representing his responsibilities to the organization and to its soldiers, sailors, marine, and airmen. Major General Martin passes the colors to Lieutenant General Burleson, signifying that the United Nations Command Special Operations Component is never without a commander. Lieutenant General Burleson then passes the colors to Brigadier General Lipson. Major General Martin will now relinquish command of Special Operations Command Korea to Brigadier General Lipson. Major General Martin passes the colors to Lieutenant General Burleson, signifying that Special Operations Command Korea is never without a commander. Lieutenant General Burleson then passes the colors to Brigadier General Lipson. Ladies and gentlemen, by authority of the terms of reference for Special Operations Command Korea, the undersigned assumes command effective 12 June 2023. Signed, Derek N. Lipson, Special Operations Command Korea, Commanding General. It is my pleasure to introduce the commander, United Nations Command Special Operations Component and Special Operations Command Korea, Brigadier General Derek Lipson. An young Haseo, Mr. Secretary, General An, General Harrison, Mayor, General Burleson, General Martin, uh, and, and also, even though they're not here, General Camera, as well as General Fenton. Uh, friends, family, thank you for being here. It's an amazing honor to assume such a significant command. First, thank you, General Martin. The progress you made assuming command and then coming out of COVID is amazing. You have handed off the best TSOC with the strongest alliance in all of SOCOM. I will tirelessly work to continue that. The history of this command and the relationship with U.S. Forces Korea 
Combined Forces Command and the United Nations Command is rich and strong, and it aligns closely with General Fenton and General LeCamere's priorities. I am grateful for the opportunity to support our nation's ironclad commitment to the alliance that has continued to grow and prosper and strengthen for 70 years. Having served in special operations around the globe, I'm familiar with the incredible reputation of the Republic of Korea Armed Forces and its special warfare branches. SOC Corps, our Republic of Korea counterparts, and the United Nations Command have a unique relationship that promotes peace and stability on the peninsula, and that is something I look forward to continuing. The first soft truth is people are more important than hardware. People must remain our number one priority, and that's not just the soldiers, but the families, all service members, and everyone they touch. We must embrace, educate, empower, and build the right experience. All the equipment in the world is worthless if we don't have the right people to employ it. The most important thing to remember is we cannot do it alone, nor should we. Our generational relationships are key, most importantly here with the Republic of Korea. As we continue to invest in that relationship, we must remember and live the SOC Corps motto, Concilio Provejo, move forward together. By moving forward and together, we will win. We are now and continue to be ready to fight and win tonight. And yet, I think it would be better to not have to fight and win through deterrence. The things we do daily as allies with regional partners ensures those we compete against do not miscalculate the strength of the United States and the Republic of Korea Alliance and our commitment to winning. To maintain that edge, we must embrace transformation. We will continue to the post-COVID emergence, which requires expert use of precious resources. We will optimize, innovate, modernize, invent, and transform as the world continues to change. Our competitors are not resting, and neither will we. To close, I want to thank those watching remotely, especially my wife, Jenny. You are the backbone of our family. That was tough. And without you, none of us would be where we are. My daughters, Tyra and Alexis, amazing women. My grandchildren, Grant and Eleanor. <clears throat> I look forward to reading you The Princess Bride, even if it is over FaceTime. My parents, Jay and Jean, since most of this is their fault. My brother, Bryce, my sister, Stacy, her husband, Greg, my niece and nephew, Cooper and Charlotte, I love you all dearly. Again, thanks to everyone here, Concilio Provejo and Deo Presso Liber. Thank you, General Lipson. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to honor the joint services through the playing of the Armed Forces Medley, and please remain standing for the departure of the official party.
Thank you for attending today's change of command. Brigadier General Lipson invites you to a reception located just outside of the venue to your left and will begin a receiving line to your right of the stage. When you're ready to depart, your escorts will guide you to your vehicles. This concludes today's ceremony.